Hi, on today's review, we're going to talk about the new Kenwood Exelon DDX795. So stay tuned. So every year, manufacturers come out with new products. Yes. Kenwood is no different. We have a brand new Kenwood Exelon here. Now you might be asking, what's the difference between regular line Kenwood and Exelon? The big difference is the Exelon is gonna come with a two year warranty. This specific radio right here had a different version of it last year. It would have been the same radio, just end in a four. Now they end in a five. That's what tells us it's the new version of the radio. It got a lot of updates and they took a couple things away. But first, let's open it up and show you what comes in the box. And speaking of the box, you might notice right off the bat, there are a few differences on the box that you may have never seen on a box before. You've seen Spotify and Pandora, but you've never seen Waze and YouTube on a box. Can't wait to tell you guys about that. As always, you get the Bluetooth or hands-free microphone. You get the power plug. Now this is the same power plug that the last year's version would have used. Not all the radios use the same plug. Kenwood does make two different power plugs depending on the series of radio. They do give you an extension for the emergency brake wire. It comes with some owner's manuals and a warranty card, a bag of screws, and some extraction tools because they still give you a cage in the box. It comes with the trim ring if you are going to be using the cage. Now I will tell you on some of the European radio dash kits, the cage is a little too big, so beware of that. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish unboxing this. We're gonna set it up and we'll take a look at the back of the radio. So on the back of the radio, the first thing that we have is the Sirius XM input. This is for the add-on SVX 300 module. These two connectors here are for the iDatalink RR Maestro. This up here is the power plug. We have two wires hanging off. We have a light green, which is the parking brake wire. And then we have a purple white which is the reverse trigger input. So if you're adding a backup camera, this has to see 12 volts when the car goes into reverse so that it will know to switch over. Which brings us to these two yellow RCA inputs here. The bottom one here is for the reverse camera. The top one here is for DVD display output. So if you have a rear seat entertainment and would like the DVD player that's on this radio to display on the back screen, you can. Other cables hanging off it is this guy right here. This is for the front view camera options. So if you wanna add a second camera, either to the front or a third brake light camera, you can add that. And then it has one USB here. It's a five volt, one and a half amp USB. This USB will read FAT32, FAT16, and NTFS hard drives. You have your five volt RCA outputs right here. On the bottom is subwoofer, and the middle is front, and on the top is rear. Then you have your FM HD radio antenna. Now let's go ahead and turn it around and power it up. So when the radio first powers up, you're gonna get the nice Kenwood splash screen with the carbon fiber and the Terminator red eyeball there. If you're powering it up for the first time, you're gonna have to go through the initial setup. So the first thing up is going to be language, Select the language. There's 22 different languages for you to choose from. Select the one you like, and then it. Select the one you like, go back. You have your clock. Now this will use the radio stations to sync, but if you don't have an RDS station in your area, go ahead and click it. Select the time zone you're closest to, then select clock adjust, and you can enter in all your information. Display, key color. This allows you to pick the color for the keys here across the bottom. There's several to choose from. You can make and adjust your own, or you can have it just on color scan. View angle. This allows you to enhance your view options for the radio. By using black levels, contrast, and brightness, it gives you the illusion of changing the way that you are looking at the display to improve image quality and sharpness. Camera. This is where you're gonna set up for your camera. So if you are adding a rear view camera and you've hooked a power up to your purple white wire, you're gonna select camera interruption on. Parking guidelines, this will give you parking guidelines that you can custom tailor simply by coming over here to guideline setup. So if your camera has backup lines already on it, you can disable them so that you can use these. Simply tap on the square you want and tap the arrow back and forth, up, down. 
If you don't want to use them, simply select off and they'll go away. As we said, this has the option for a front camera. If you turn that on, now, if you're using a rear view camera that doesn't have the ability to flip or reverse the image, this go ahead and select here and it'll automatically do it for you. If you're using the Maestro RR, this will be where all your OEM setup is at. And then of course, turn the demo off. Once you've got this satisfactory, go ahead and select finish. One of the new features added to this is the feature just like its big brother, which is the automatic warning screen that pops up. There's two things you have an option of doing. If you select this little white box right here, every time the radio powers up, this screen will stay on for 10 seconds, it automatically go away. If you don't select this box and just select agree, every time you start up the vehicle, you will have to select agree. Now let's talk a little bit about the display screen that we have here. This is a 6.95 inch, 800 by 480, clear resistive, transparent TN LCD panel with LED backlighting. It has 1,152,000 pixels. Now this unit does have some hard buttons across the bottom, so let's go ahead and go over those real quick. The first thing is the IR sensor. So if you wanna add an optional remote control to it, you can. Next up is going to be volume up and down. Next to that is going to be your camera. If you tap that, then go ahead and pull up your camera. Now the camera is divided into different sections. If you tap the center here, it'll switch to the rear camera. Tap the center here again, it'll switch to the front camera. If you tap the center low, it'll go ahead and close out the camera. If you press and hold the camera button, it'll go ahead and shut the display down. Tap it again, it'll come back up. Next is your home button. This is the home screen here. So if we go ahead and go out to the radio, select home, it'll return us to that. If we press and hold the home, it'll go ahead and power down the radio. Hit it again, and it'll power back up. Next is the menu button. This launches the dual menu structure that its bigger brothers have. This is new for these model radios. Tap it again, it'll go away. If you press and hold it, it'll attenuate the volume. Next to that is going to be picture in a picture. This feature allows you to change when you're in app mode between sources. So if you have your Waze, which we'll show you in a little bit, up here on display and you'd like to switch to FM instead of listening to music on your phone, you're going to use this button to do it. If you press and hold it, it will also launch Bluetooth Voice for Series Eyes Free and or Google Voice. Then you have your eject button next to that. Press it. It's going to give you the ability to tilt screen, so if you have a glare, you can easily tilt the screen or hit disk eject and the unit will power down so that you can put a CD behind it. Now a few things about this radio, it does have 50 watts by four. So these radios, because they're built on the same operating system as like a 9904, they can do a lot more source features than the previous model. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you those. Now looking at the radio on the main menu page, as you see this thing right here, it says web link. Next to that weighs, and HD radio. We'll go ahead and hit this little nine icon here. Now this is gonna expand us out to more sources. If we tap the arrow over here, it'll take us out to even more sources. One more time, even more. Now, as you notice, like these are all grayed out. And the reason why they're grayed out is because some of these are actually sources that are controlled through the iDatalink module. The ones that are colored are ones you have access to. The CD is grayed out because it has to have a CD in it in order for it to be considered a source. One nice feature of these new radios is the ability to move your sources around. So for example, if you want to do Bluetooth audio as your main three, and by main three, I mean if you notice, you have just three icons listed here. All you have to do is press and hold and move that icon into its new position. Now when you're on your main menu, you'll have Bluetooth audio as a main source. To move it back, simply repeat the process. You can also move from page to page simply by holding and dragging over to the new page. Let's go ahead and take this in reverse. We'll look at HD radio. HD radio allows you to do simulcast, meaning you can have more than one station on your station if that station provides it for you. So for example, if you have 97.9 HD1, there might also be an HD2 channel. And you can get to that simply by hitting the track up or track down button on the radio. To make a preset, simply open the door, scroll up to where you'd like to have it, 
In this case, you have 15 FM presets as well as 5 AM presets. Pick one you like, press and hold. You'll hear the beep, that means it's set. You don't have to leave the door open, you can simply drag up and down just by doing this. Now, if you're gonna do Sirius XM, it'll also work the same way. And before you ask, this guy right here, this colored screen, is going to be there if there is no station identification logo. There's no way to change it, it's just always gonna be there. Now where that becomes useful is if you are in the home screen and you tap this area here, it'll return you to whatever source you're in. As we said, with the Sirius XM, you do have to have the add-on SVX 300 tuner. As far as searching and everything goes, it's gonna be very similar to FM. There is one other door, if you tap over here, that you can get to in the Sirius XM. This will be where a lot of your direct channel search is. Next up is Bluetooth audio. Now with this unit, they brought over the new five phone party mix. So you can have five phones paired to this that will allow you to listen to music from any phone you'd like. To change phones, you simply hit the arrow here, the door opens, hit device change, tap the new phone you'd like to listen to. It'll go ahead and launch that phone and start playing music from it. You can also launch it from the phone if it's paired by simply pressing play. Now the nice thing about the Bluetooth audio on this is that's not gonna change your Bluetooth phone because Bluetooth phone and Bluetooth audio are totally different. Over here in the bottom corner, you'll notice the little phone icon. If you tap that, as you see, this has dual phone pairing. So you can have two phones paired for calling. So now we could be listening to one phone and still have the main phone paired to this to make and receive phone calls. If you'd like to switch, Simply select your second phone and it'll automatically do that. Now the nice thing too is whether it doesn't matter whether this phone or this phone is paired, if you get a phone call, it'll automatically ring to that phone. So right now we have it paired to Nando's phone and if Mr. White receives a phone call, it'll automatically switch to that phone. We can hit talk. When we're done with the conversation, select X and you're all set. Now when you go back to the phone, it'll still be on Nando's phone, so you don't have to worry about changing it back and forth. The other thing too to keep in mind is when you are talking on the phone, if the volume is not loud enough, if you turn up and down the volume while you're talking on the phone, it is only gonna adjust the volume for the phone calls. When you exit out of it, it'll automatically go back to whatever volume you're listening to before. And when you get the next phone call, it'll be at the volume you had just set it to at the last phone call. On the side here, you have a few options. You have your call history. This one here is gonna be for your phone book. You can make favorites. You can dial old school. Or if you press the microphone, it'll go ahead and launch Siri Ice Free. And you could say something like, call five star car stereo. I found one option. Five star car stereo on Golf 2 Bay Boulevard. Is that the one you're looking for? Yes. Calling five star car stereo. So you can use that feature to make and return text messages as well as you just saw make phone calls. Now it says Spotify and Pandora. These are gonna be controlled from your smartphone. So these are just gonna launch the apps on your phone. It doesn't have the ability to make and receive those on their own. As we said, it'll play CDs and DVDs. It'll do direct iPod control. Now the USB will play formats such as DSD, WAV, FLAC, and MP3s. It's also gonna be used for the weblink application. Next to that is gonna be your audio adjust. But before we get into the audio section, let's go ahead and talk about what Basically, everyone's been waiting for the Weblink app. I know, you thought I was going to say Waze. Yes. Well, the Weblink app is what enables you to use Waze. It's an app that you download to either your Android or iPhone. You, once you've paired the Bluetooth, you also have to plug in the USB. It needs both in order for this app to work. We just so happen to have a USB cable. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Now, it's going to ask you on your phone, do you want to allow this to work? you're gonna hit allow, and then it's gonna launch the app. Every time the app powers up, it's gonna ask you to hit allow. So if you're getting in and out of your car, just like you have to hit the okay on the screen or wait 10 seconds for it to go away, you're gonna to have to hit okay on your phone. It's just how it's designed right now. Once it is connected, it'll give you a big check here that says connected. Now we can go ahead and check out the web link. So go ahead and select web link, and it's gonna start up the web link app. Now on the app on your phone, you can tell it what apps you want it to display on here. Right now we've selected YouTube, Media Player, Yelp, 
and weather. It's also asking us again to hit OK because it would like to do something with your phone. Let's hit the YouTube. And what it's going to do is going to bring up your standard YouTube. You can come over here and select search. Now let's say you wanted to watch a video by your favorite YouTubers. Go ahead and select enter. And it's going to pull up a five star video. And then it's going to go ahead and start playing it. Anyways, who doesn't like leftovers? I mean, let's think about it. Right now, this time of the year, it's all about leftovers. Leftover turkey, leftover ham. No leftover bread, though. As Oprah says, I love bread. Those hot, buttery rolls. Okay, anyway, so we have leftovers. That food. Now, if you're watching this and saying, hey, wait a minute, that looks just a little choppy, you'd be correct. When you're done, tap the screen. You can either hit the back arrow to get back to search, or if you hit the four little squares in the bottom, it'll go ahead and take you back out to your main page. If you want to see the weather, it'll show you what your weather looks like. Hit the back arrow. If for some reason you want to do Yelp on your radio, you can do that. Media player. Media Player is going to give you another way to play the songs that are on your device. Tap up here where it says Artist, and you can click Playlists. If you hit the down arrow for Search, select the playlist you want, tap on a song, you get a nice big album artwork, and of course the song will start playing. You can hit Random, you can hit Repeat, you can also search and show my list back to where you were. If you hit the four button, of course, it'll take you back home. Now let's go ahead and hit home, and we'll select Waze. Now as you can see, Waze automatically comes up on the map. All right, so if you tap the corner button here, which is gonna be your search, you can tap the search icon. Um. We can type in a location. Home Depot. And from here, it's going to look like ways. You hit go. It'll go ahead and start and do all the fun little ways things that you want. Now, if we hit home again, let's say we have it on HD radio. Hit ways. Now we can listen to radio, which is going to be all static because we don't have an antenna. And we can have our ways going in the background. She's going to interrupt and talk to you and tell you all the fun things that are all about Waze. All right, so there you go. That's Waze. That's, you know, for, for a lot of you guys that like that big album artwork, Media Player might be something you're interested in. Oh, yeah, I, I like mean, it. it takes over the screen. It oh, looks yeah. pretty nice. Now, as we said, audio. Yes. Now, the nice thing about Exelon is Exelon has always been considered an, an audio piece. It has the 5 volt output, which is great. And most of the, these that we've ever tested don't ever clip. Mm -mm. No. We haven't tested this one yet, but all the ones we've tested haven't clipped. So we'll, we'll get around to this one. So let's go ahead and talk about the audio features that are built into this radio. To get to the audio features, hit the menu button and then select audio. The first thing that's going to come up is going to be this page right here which is going to break it down into categories. We'll look at volume offset first. Volume offset is the feature that allows you to adjust the output volumes or input volumes of each source so that they all match. So for example, if FM is really loud but the phone you're listening to isn't, you can come over here and select Bluetooth device and adjust the volume up or down to match. Next, we'll talk about speakers and crossovers. Now, the nice thing about Kenwood, and they've had this for years, is the ability to make setting up the radio as hard or as easy as you like. So, for example, on the top here, you'll notice where it says car type, and it's off. If you want, you could select what type of car size you have. There's a couple to choose from. Next, speaker. Now, if you notice these two little purple boxes around the speakers here, these are the fronts, and that's what this is asking you. If you tap speaker, you can tell it what size speaker you have in that current location. We'll stick with six and a half for right now, or you can tell it you have the OEM factory speaker in there. Then it's gonna ask you, where is that speaker located? Upper door area, lower door, on dash, under dash. And then do you have a tweeter? What size is that tweeter? Small, medium, large, or no tweeter at all? 
Now what this will do is this will go ahead and set up a generic what it feels your crossover setting should be. You can repeat the process for rear and also for the subwoofer. Or if you'd like, you can just go into the actual crossover and set it up yourself. So you can choose what frequency you like for the crossover, or if you don't want any crossover at all, in this case it would say through, move your way back, and then what you want your slope to be, 12, 18, 24, and also six. And then if you want, you can actually lower the gain out of the radio. Now one other thing that these have, when you go into the crossover settings, is the tweeter gain right here. And what this allows you to do is if you have tweeters that are really, really loud and obnoxious, this will allow you to go in and tone them down. As you notice this little icon right here, what it's doing is it's adding a, a crossover to it and allowing you to gain those down so they're not as loud. Equalizer. This has a 13 band EQ with presets. So you have pop, easy, top 40, jazz, powerful, rock, flat, and then you have users one through four. So we'll go ahead and pick pop. If you notice up here, it says all sources. SRC stands for source. This allows you to do a feature called source tone adjust, meaning depending on what source you are on, you can have a different EQ setting for each one of those sources. So if you're listening to FM and all you talk, listen to on FM is talk radio, you might want to pick something like flat. But if you're listening to your iPod or your Bluetooth music, you might want to put powerful on. This allows you to do that. Now, if you don't care about any of that, select the all source icon and it'll make the EQ the same for every source you're listening to. The other thing that's on the EQ page is your subwoofer level control. This is kind of nice and I'll show you why. If you're just in your regular setting, let's say you're listening to your AM, FM or whatever source you're listening to, if you notice there's this little icon right here. This is the EQ icon. If you tap that, this will automatically take you to the EQ which also has the subwoofer volume control. So it is right one click away, allow you to get in to adjust your subwoofer level. You also have balance and fader. This allows you to do any fading you'd like so if little kitties are sleeping in the back you can move it towards the front and then when you're done select center and it'll automatically center back up for you position and dta dta stands for digital time alignment there again this is one of those things that kenwood allows you to go basic or go crazy if you pick front left front right all front or all it'll go ahead and give you a generic preset digital time alignment if you pick front left and you select adjust, now you can go in and actually enter the time alignment as well as adjust the levels of delay to each speaker. Sound effect. Sound effects is one of those things that Kenwood does that allows you to get an immediate response when you press a button to notice a difference in sound. The first one at the top of the list is going to be bass boost. Bass boost allows you to take that music, let's say some 70s rock that has very little bass, it's kind of dry and bland, and add that back in simply by adjusting either one, two, or three. Be careful of this though, because if you're listening to music that already has bass in it, you could blow some speakers. Loudness. Loudness is a feature that is in the radios if you like to listen to music at low volumes, but you'd also like a lot of impact and feel to the music. By selecting low or high, that'll go ahead and give you that impact. Now the nice thing about loudness is as the volume goes up, the loudness will start to go away so that you don't blow the speakers at higher volumes. Drive EQ. Drive EQ is designed to try to reduce road noise in your car. So if you have a lot of road noise, you may want to try turning that on and just see what it does. Space enhancement. Space enhancement comes with small, medium, or large. What it's designed to do is it uses a DSP to make the sound stage bigger in your car. This can be real fun to play with, but there again, with all these, be careful. Supreme. Supreme is designed to improve sound lost from compressed files. So, if you're listening to something like HD radio or an MP3 or an AAC or something that has to be compressed, this will help to make it sound more like an uncompressed version of it. It comes default on. Realizer. Realizer uses the DSP to give you a more realistic sound and it has three settings for you to play with. Stage EQ. Stage EQ is designed to move the soundstage from low in the doors to higher in the dash. 
by using that same DSP. All right, so we're almost done. There's a few more features I wanna show you that are buried in the menu systems that you might want to adjust. So let's take a look at those. Go ahead and hit the menu button again. And this time we're gonna select setup. The first thing to come up is AV. As you see, it just says OEM setup. There's not much there. Next is gonna be display. Now, if you didn't get the opportunity to set up the radio when you first power it up, that's all gonna be located in this page here, your view angle and whatnot. User interface. This thing beeps. If you don't like the beep, that's where it's at. You can turn it off. You can also change the language here, do touch panel calibration, set your clock, camera. There again, if you forgot to set up your camera at the beginning, you can go ahead and adjust all those same features here. Special. This is where the demo mode is. So there again, if the installer forgot to turn the demo off, it's in special. Manual power off. Completely off or AV off. Now, what this allows you to do is that if, let's say, you just want the radio to turn off, but you still want to make and receive Bluetooth phone calls, if you select AV off, all this is going to do when you go to power down the radio is shut down the AV source, but keep the radio active so you can still make and receive calls. Audio setup memory, audio setup recall, audio setup clear. If you've gone ahead and taken the time to set up all the cool audio functions that are built into this radio, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and adjust these. If you select audio setup memory, this will allow you to memorize all the settings you've just set up. And then if your radio is disconnected or taken out of your car, you can select audio setup recall. Now, if you've done that, and let's say the settings aren't what you thought they would be, you can hit audio setup clear, and it'll go ahead and default it back to out of the box. Software information, it's just that. If you wanna to check to see what version of software you have on the radio, just in case you need an update, it's gonna be located here. And then initialize, which we'll come back to. Bluetooth, anything and everything that it has to do with Bluetooth is gonna be located here. So in this case, select the device. Here's the two devices we have paired. If we'd like to delete them, this is where they're gonna to be to delete. Now let's go back to that initialize. Select it. Are you sure you want to initialize? Yes. Now what initialize is going to do is bomb this radio back to out of the box settings. So we've played with it now for a while. We've touched all the buttons and we moved all the switches. We wanna go ahead and put it back to the way it's supposed to be like it was brand new in the box. That's how you do it. So if you've done like we've done, where you just got this new toy and you wanna to make sure you hit every button and yeah. find every feature. Correct. That's what initialize is for. Start over. Start over. All right. Now, as we said, there are some features that this doesn't have that the older models did. One yes. of them is going to be the remote control. It no longer comes with the remote control in the box. The yeah. other one, which may be a little bit more important, is it doesn't have an aux jack anymore. What that means is that if you want to do anything like use the CAC 3AV to get some form of an HDMI video into this for screen mirroring or anything like that, this doesn't have that input for you to do that anymore. But you do get the cool ways feature. All right, Fernando, I think this one is done. Yeah. Please end the show for me. All right. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, like, and you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. And as always, you guys have a great night and we'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.